Hey folks, TechNiverse here. Today we're taking a look at Kira 4.9. We are still going over our tutorial settings and today we are going to be taking a look at the retraction setting under travel. And this is a very important setting to reduce stringing as you'll see in just a few minutes. And we're basically going to cover when and where to use this setting and why you want to make sure that you have it properly adjusted today on the TechNiverse channel. Welcome back folks if this is not a returning visit and it's your first time here make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as we have tons of these tutorials and a lot more coming at you today as I said we are covering retraction and as you can see if you were with us for the last video I've kept the model I've multiplied it a couple of times and I've gone back to the line type color scheme in preview mode in order to get this view you will have to slice and then click preview and I'm basically going to leave it in this mode because what I want to show you is easily accessible by clicking on the only unchecked box under line type. So if you see here it says travels, I'm going to click that and you can see there are a bunch of strange dark purplish blue lines here and what those are are the actual travel moves. Now when it's building these three pillars in particular you can see a triangular shape appearing between them that's basically the path the machine printhead is going to take. And what happens with stringing in particular is it's still extruding filament when it goes to make this travel and even though it's only slowly what they call oozing from the tip and not actually turning from the extruder, it is dragging that long thin line of filament out in this direction and that is how you end up with stringing. Now the solution for that is retraction and I have it enabled, you pretty much always want to have it enabled but to what degree varies depending on what machine and what setup you're using. We'll go over that in just a second. Basically what retraction does is exactly what it sounds like. When the machine gets to a point where it's about to do a travel move, it will stop and then it will pull filament back in. Now this keeps it from oozing out of the tip and leaking, creating this stringing feature during the next travel move and then it basically will prime the nozzle with the amount it removed and start printing again making sure that you don't end up with any gaps in your model. So once again, if we go into the settings here, I'm going to type in retraction. This is a handy way to get a hold of all of the settings that we can see. If I click, uh, if I type in what I'm looking for, it gives me all of the settings related to it. So most of these listed under travel here are the ones we want to look at. Some of these are turned off um, and this is basically just saying that it's not showing them in my view over here so let's go ahead we can tell it when to retract we can tell it what speed to retract at we can tell it what distance so let's go over a couple of these um, trick before outer wall okay so now that we have a few more settings to look at we can basically tell it when to retract if I want to retract when it changes layers uh, I can do that that is to get a slightly cleaner seam. I generally leave that unchecked. It's kind of an unnecessary retraction. This one is the main one. And as you can see, this isn't set properly for the Ender 3. That's because I haven't uploaded my profile into here. This is the beta version of 4.9. Um, but your retraction distance is gonna determine how much filament it pulls back into the nozzle. And you, you wanna make sure that that same amount can get primed back into the nozzle. So there is another setting here called Z-Hop when retracted. This will lift it up slightly and then move it over before it retracts. Can slightly reduce stringing, can also cause problems with your model. But there are a couple other settings in here that have to do with travel that aren't really anything to do with the actual retraction. And some of those are kind of important too. So let's type in avoid. Let me get these three other settings here. Now avoid, avoid, avoid. Let's take a look at these. I generally have all of these turned on. Now, it is important to notice that turning these two on will increase your print time significantly because what they do is exactly what they say. It will avoid printed parts while traveling, meaning if there is another one of these in between here and where it's going, it will move out of its way around that part so as not to bump into it and then continue on its path. So that travel around the object instead of just going over it adds extra print time and you can do the same thing with supports 
If you have really fragile supports, you don't want to knock them over. You can have the print head avoid those supports during travel, but as I said, it will definitely increase print time. And how much it increases print time is determined by this value right here. So the travel avoid distance is how close the travel calculations will let your nozzle get to the object that you're trying to avoid. So at set at 0.625, it's basically going to avoid them by less than a millimeter, but it will make sure that it doesn't cross over them or bump into them. You can increase this value and it will go around them wider or further away, and that will also increase your print time quite a bit. So I hope you have a better understanding of some of the travel settings and what exactly they are. I know I didn't go over too much the exact number you want to use for this retraction distance, but it's definitely going to depend on your machine. You're going to be retracting a lot less if you have a direct drive setup than if you have a Bowden setup, and in some cases not at all. TPU is another thing that if you're printing TPU specifically, you want to be aware of your retraction settings because in most cases, you want to retract very little, very slowly, or it can bind up in your extruder even on a direct drive machine. So if you have any questions or comments about retraction or travel or any of that, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments. That's going to be it for me on this one, guys. Technivorous out. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it from my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.